Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to our homestead. We are in the midst of a major garden renovation. We're covering things up, putting certain areas to bed, because if you didn't see on one of our previous videos, we have a salty well. So that has contributed to a high sodium content here in the garden, and that is detrimental to a vegetable garden. But let me show you the one area that we can use this year. I'm so excited about it. It's this big space here in the back. This is only four years old. The rest of the garden is seven years old. And this space still does need some amendments added to it. When we had that soils test, it told us it was deficient in a lot of things and still high in sodium. But we've got our amendments and we are gonna show you what we are adding Per our recommendation from our soil scientists, we're gonna show you what we're adding to it and how we're doing it. Let's get going. We do have an area of that garden bed that needs some serious organic matter. And we are gonna open up our Johnson Sioux bioreactor today, grab out that beautiful, beautiful soil that's inside of there and add it to that space. We're also gonna add a little bit of this over here. This is our leaf pile area. We've got leaves breaking down in various stages, making leaf mold compost. Let me show you the beautiful material that we have here in our leaf pile. I'm gonna dig down in here to the bottom. Unbelievable. <sighs> Look at this. Okay, we'll get the stick out of there. Look at that amazing material. Look how it holds together. Now it did rain last night, so it is a little wet, but I can't squeeze any water out and it just holds together perfectly. That is going to be a super charging, rich soil amendment for our garden. If you haven't seen our previous videos on how to build this Johnson Sioux bioreactor, please click on the link at the top of the screen. Also, we did a video on the one year results of the bioreactor, which were great, but we had some challenges with it and I explain it in that video. But now the material in here is absolutely beautiful and ready to be used on the garden. This bioreactor was almost full when we first started it. And now you can see how far it is broken down. It's a little dry here on the top, but down in the center of it, you can see how nice the material is. It holds together. It's not super wet. It is absolutely beautiful. And it's teeming with fungal activity that is going to heal the soil. Now you can see this area that I'm standing on right now was devoid of a lot of nutrition and that's because this original space had this back corner where I didn't, didn't have enough mushroom compost. If you didn't see my original video on the benefits of getting mushroom compost for your garden, click on the video at the top of the screen. You can see I've got some broccoli in the background and that is from our fall planting. It's already spring and they didn't grow very well at all. That is because this area is really deficient in nitrogen. So that feather meal really helps out a lot. Let's add those amendments to the soil and show you how we are going to work it into the soil. I'm here in the barn and it's time to mix up our amendments for that area of the garden. Now, this is my soils report. It's very specific. The recommendations are very specific and it's for 100 square feet. So I'm gonna double whatever is on here because that area is 200 square feet. I'm deficient in nitrogen. I'm deficient in phosphorus actually in that area. So I could add some manure, but in this case, it's recommended that I add soft rock phosphate. I need a little bit of magnesium sulfate. I'm deficient, very deficient in potassium sulfate. Of course, I'm excessive in sodium. So obviously I don't need any of that. I need some boron, some manganese, some copper, and some molybdenum. I've got everything I need here. I've got some magnesium sulfate or Epsom salts. Got my soft rock phosphate. Here is the feather meal that we are going to use for our nitrogen source. And it's recommended on here for either feather meal, soybean meal, or alfalfa meal. And then I need to repeat that every 60 days for high nitrogen consuming uh, fruits and vegetables like those cruciferous vegetables like that broccoli out there. 
So here I've got some cobalt sulfate. We're good in cobalt in that area, so I don't need that. Here is some sodium molybdate dihydrate. So this is the molybdenum that we will add, and it's just a small amount, but that small amount is going to make a huge difference for our plants. We've got some calcium carbonate powder, but in that area, I'm good in calcium. We've got a lot over here. Here is our copper sulfate, and this is pelletized. So the best way to apply that is dissolve it in a watering can. So this is going to be separate from what I spread out there because it's in too large of a form to really get it broadcast in the best way. So we're gonna water that area. We've got zinc sulfate and ferrous sulfate or iron. We don't need either of those in the garden at this time. We do have the manganese though, so we will need that. And as you can see, I'm missing the boron or sodium borate, but I can get that at the store really easily because all that is is borax. So what I have here is a scale and you can pick these up at Walmart for like 10 bucks. I'll list this one in the description below. It's a little bit more, but it's lasted me 12 years. I think we bought this when we moved to Texas. So it's, it's a good investment to have one of these around. I'm gonna put a bucket on it because that's what I'm going to use to mix up all of my amendments. I'm gonna zero this out and start adding what we need to the bucket. So this feather meal that I found is organic. It's OMRI certified. So that is good. If you can find organic, do that. So we got 15 ounces of feather meal that we need for that 100 square foot area. So we're gonna get 30 ounces of this into our bucket. Okay, once we're done with that, we're gonna add 1.2 pounds doubled, so 2.4 pounds of our soft rock phosphate. Now, you need to be very specific with this. If you've taken the time to pay for a soils test and for a soil scientist to actually give you the recommendations, follow them to the T because they know what they're doing. They're the chemists, they're looking at the soil, they know what it needs, so follow them specifically. And every time I do this, I'm zeroing it out so I can easily measure it. I'm just gonna leave the bucket here and keep adding things in. It's zeroed out again, I need nine ounces, in this case now 18 ounces of Epsom salts or magnesium sulfate. Again, I don't have the borax, so I can't add that. Let's skip to the next one. I need my manganese. So I need my manganese sulfate, which is right here. Now you can find all of these on Amazon. You don't have to go through some special company to get these. Everything I found here, this alpha chemicals, I've been using these for years in various forms whenever, whenever I added amendments in the past on Amazon. So I'm gonna leave the link to everything I use in this video below the video. But again, your specific soil recommendations are going to be different from mine. The last thing is our molybdenum or sodium molybdate. So we're gonna open this up. Now it doesn't take much of this per the recommendation, but it does say I'm very low. This is in a crystallized form as well. You know what? I'm actually going to add this to the water also and use it that way because it's such a small amount, it's a half a gram per 100 square feet. So I'm only gonna use one gram per, for that entire space. And that really needs to be broadcast the best it can through the watering can. If I try to do this in the granular form, it's really not gonna work. We've got our entire mixture here. I'm so excited to get this on the garden and get this area healed in producing some amazing food. Now you might be thinking this is going to cost a lot of money to amend my soil. It's really not as much as you think. You see how much is in the bottom of the bucket? All these amendments didn't cost very much in the big picture. They cost maybe $180, give or take. But you can see the tiny amount for 200 square feet that I'm actually using. So what I have in front of me is going to last me years and years and years, especially when it comes down to stuff like uh, the molybdenum, because this whole pack, I think this is a pound. So if I'm only using per recommendation, which says very low, I'm only using a gram, you know how long is it gonna last? A long time. All right, we're gonna get some water in here and mix this up, and we are going to get this broadcast onto the garden. All I'm gonna do is broadcast this by hand, and I, I am wearing a glove, but you don't need to if you don't want to. 
Make sure you get it as evenly or as even as you can. That wasn't very even over your entire area. And then we'll work it into the top layer of the soil. Now there is probably some broadcasting tool that they make, but I just don't have anything like that. Now we've got a full watering can. It's only about a gallon and a half, give or take. So I need to be precise with this and sparingly go over this area just gently and get as much as that copper and that molybdenum as I can um, on the entire space. So I'm just kind of moving that can back and forth. I'm about halfway done. Looking good, I'm about halfway through the can. So two ways we can do this. We can use a garden rake. This is an amazing way to actually till up the top two inches of your soil and just to get that worked into the soil. And what you do is start straight down, kind of like jab it into the soil and pop it up. Straight down, pop it up like that. And that's how I've done this for years here in the garden. I learned this from, I think, uh, Curtis Stone. And that dude is just an amazing teacher. You can see how it throws up a lot of the dirt and just mixes in that top two inches or so. Now, the other way you can do it, this is my battery powered Toro Flex Force uh, system. I've got a weed trimmer on it. I've got a pole saw for it a whole bunch of attachments for this. And actually these come with a little tiller attachment that you can get for it. And this thing is actually really powerful. Till like that, if that's what you wanna do, if you don't wanna use a garden fork. And it's really going to give you a nice fluffy soil. You can use it going forward or backward, doesn't matter, works both ways. I'm excited to grow in at least this bed in our garden this year, and obviously our greenhouse and the new plot on the north side of the property. If you're interested in building a greenhouse, we assembled ours by ourselves except for one small portion that was pulling the plastic over. You can go check out those videos up here at the top of the screen. If you have any questions about what we did, let me know in the comments section below. Now click on this video right here, which talks about nine essential skills that you really need to develop if you wanna be a homesteader. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.